The Linux Show, starring Nick Carter, Master Detective. Presented by the three great Linux home brighteners. This is the story of a man known the world over as one of the most daring and resourceful characters in the history of detective fiction. A man whose name has become a symbol of the triumph of right and justice over the sinister forces of crime and lawlessness. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Today's exciting case, The Talking Tree. Another exciting chapter dramatized from the life story of Nick Carter. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick Carter investigated the murder of a beggar with a fortune in his pocket and found the solution to the strange case of a talking tree. And now for today's exciting case from the life of Nick Carter. Today is file index day at the old brownstone mansion at the corner of 5th and 4th. The giant study is filled with piles of neatly typed cards, as Nick and Patsy keep regular tabs on the thousands of criminals the famous detective has encountered in his long career. Charlie Buzz Burns, tried and convicted for forgery July 1941, Sentence, August 1941, to seven-year term at Eaton Penitentiary. Check. Well, that finishes the bees. Start the bees. Okay, Nick. But it feels like it's going to be a long, hard day. <sighs> Albert Cabal. Tried and convicted of first-degree assault, April 1931. Hold it. Hmm? Cabal's on a parole. Put his card in the active file with a note. Last seen in St. Louis, July of this year. Right. Johnny Cabin. Tried and convicted... Oh, goody the door. That means a five-minute vacation. Well, whoever it is, send him away. We've got to finish this job. I will, but my heart won't be in it, Nick. Johnny Cabin tried and convicted of second-degree murder. Life term at East Kent State. Yes, I remember, Johnny. He was the one who swore no private detective would ever dare to take him. And he was wrong like the rest of them. No more work for today, Nick. We've got a customer. Oh, Pastor. This I is I an could... old friend of mine, Nick, Mr. Peter Simpson. He takes me riding twice a day. Takes you I riding know. twice a day? Oh, I see. Streetcar conductor. Yes, sir, Mr. Carter. Miss Bowen takes my car every morning and every night. It's across town. Passes right behind his house. Mr. Simpson's got a problem. One of his customers won't get off the trolley. How's that? Well, it's the end of my run behind your house, sir. I left the trolley there and run up to see you. I remembered Miss Bowen talking about how you help folks out when they get in a jam. I'm in a bad one, sir. What's the trouble? Well, like Miss Bowen said, one of my customers won't get off the car. Why not? Because, Mr. Carter, he's been murdered. <laughs> My trolley car here, Mr. Carter. I closed the doors and left everything. Wait a minute, I'll open the door for you. Uh, come up, sir. Hey, uh, he's in the back of the car. You can see him. He was the last one. And I said to him, last stop, all out. He don't move. I thought he was asleep. All there right, he... Simpson, I understand. Yeah, fine, I thought you would. Oh, Nicky, he's been stabbed. There's a knife sticking in his side. Yes, wait. Well? Not dead yet, but he will be in a minute. Bleeding for half an hour, mostly internal. Can't be moved or saved. No hope for him. Oh, Nick. Hey, wait. He's trying to talk. <laughs> Listen. Where were you? Can you tell us who did this? Stone Valley. What? That Stone Valley. What? Talking tree. What was that? Talking tree. Killed by talking Million dollars. <laughs> He's dead. Oh, oh smoke. This is awful, Mr. Carter. I can't have no murdered guys on my car. You're all right, Jensen. Just go out and call Sergeant Matheson and his homicide department. All right. Now, let's get to work, Patsy. Empty his pockets. Golly, Nick, what do you mean? Killed by a talking tree and been babbling about a million dollars. I don't know. Dying men usually speak the truth. I'd like to know what the truth is about that talking tree. Well, nothing worthwhile in any of his pockets, Patsy. A torn and empty. No handkerchief, no wallet. 27 cents in chains, total asset. Oh, so 
where do we stand? Exactly nowhere. What do you mean? No identification of any kind in this man, Betsy. Nothing to tell us who he is or why he was killed. Well, what about the murder weapon? That knife? Just an ordinary kitchen knife. No prints on the handle. Golly. Killer probably sat beside him, drove the knife into his side, got up and left the trolley. That's all. And look at him. Clothes, shabby and torn. Very obviously a tramp. But who'd want to kill a tramp? And for what? I don't know yet. Perhaps... Wait a minute. Hmm? Ah, oh, here's something I overlooked. Seems to be a hard lump in the front corner of the jacket. Probably slipped down from the torn pocket. Here, wait a minute. What is it, Nick? The answer to your question. Look. It, it looks like a big lump of crystal. Happens to be an opal. Opal? You mean that rough piece of peculiar-looking stone is a jewel opal? Uncut and unpolished. Must weigh about 30 carats. Ooh. Worth quite a bit of money. That's see, this may be the answer to why our victim was killed. Still, you know, it doesn't answer the question of how it came into his possession. Or explain his dying speech about talking trees. What do we do now? Leave the body for Sergeant Matheson and our friends at the homicide department. We're hustling down to the jewel center where there's opal. Tampering with evidence again, Nick? Well, maybe that's what the police would call it, but I call it solving a murder. Patsy, I'm going to give you a lesson in the art of jewels. Hmm? The average person doesn't realize that jewelers keep track of gems as closely as the police watch ex-convicts. Every stone of any real value, cut or uncut, can be checked and traced. Here's our place. International Appraising Company. Well, there are dozens of appraising offices down here. Yes, anyone will do. Come on. Right. Close class. Customers. I'm just going out to lunch. Better to go to World Appraising across the street. Well, I won't keep you a minute. Come on out. I'm Nick Carter. Listen, I got bad digestion. Not good for me to miss my lunch hour. What's in your mind, Mr. Carter? Trouble? Plenty. Case of murder. This happens to be one of the clues, Mr. Bowman. Let's see. Oh, a piece of opal, huh? Right. I'd like to trace it. Know which stock this comes from? General source and so on? Who sells this variety? I can do better than that. I put a price on this stone an hour ago. You what? You heard me, lady. This stone was brought into me an hour ago for appraisal. I gave him the price and they left. Eh? Hey? How many? Two men. Little guy, looked like a tramp. And the other? Nice looking. Kind of professional looking. Doctor, maybe. Looked like the tramp was trying to sell the stone to the other. Called him Professor. Professor Stevens. Professor Stevens, huh? Good enough for me. Thanks a lot, Bowman. What's your fee? I've been paid once for appraising this stone. That's enough. Now, go away. I got my digestion to worry about. Thanks. Come on, Petty. Let's find a university catalog. Maybe we can locate this Professor Stevens and find out about the talking tree. <laughs> Okay, Patsy, get going. Uptown. Right, Nick. Any luck? All the luck in the world. Professor W.A. Stevens, Chair of Mineralogy at the University. Office 227, Geology Hall. Mineralogy? Well, that could tie in with Opal, huh, Nick? It'd also tie in with a million dollars in the murder. Wish our dead friend had been with a botanist that would have explained the talking tree. Well, maybe we'll find this Stevens doubles in botany or... Careful, Patsy, you're being cut off. Oh. Watch out. Nick, he's cut me right over to the curb. Steady. Let me handle it. That wasn't an accident. Stay right where you are, Carter. You too, lady. I got a rod and a license to carry it. Well, hello, Coffin. Patsy, meet Dubsy Coffin. When we get back to our file cards, you'll meet him in the sea. Can the double talk routine, Carter? Now, look, I don't want no trouble from you. Keep the opal if you want. Just give me the mat. What mat? This is a friendly talk, see? I ain't getting rough because I always like to speak my piece first. We're listening very carefully, Dubsy. Sammy the bum was my pal. So he gets knocked off and the trolley car, so okay. You want to catch the killer? Good luck. But being Sammy was my pal, I'm his inheritor. Get it? I want the map, Carter. The map you took off Sammy. We didn't. Hold it, Patrick. How much is the map worth to you, Dubsy? You ought to know. If you don't, it won't do you no good. We don't know. Now, we can guess. A million dollars? Not that much. But it's worth a big piece of change. To me, not to you. So, all right. Do I get it? Not even if we had it. So, okay. You speak your piece, I speak mine. I'll be seeing you again, Carter. And I'll let something else talk you into handing over the map. That's carpeting. 
So long, Dubsy. Remember what I tell you. To the university, Patsy. Maybe Professor Stevens can tell us what's going on. with Sammy the Bum? That's what Dubsy Coffin indicated. Right in here. Mm-hmm. Well, from the way Coffin talked, it didn't sound as though he killed him. Could simply be talk. Mm, suppose it could. But he mentioned the map. Do you think Sammy was killed for that? Very possible. Up the stairs. Mm-hmm. Well, evidently, there's a map tied up with the opal Sammy was carrying. Yes, but it's my belief the opal's just a side issue. Coffin didn't seem to care about that. And Sammy tried to sell it to Professor Stevens. Then wh- what? Hmm? Professor Stevens' office. Oh. Maybe he's got a class. Could be. Let's go in and wait. Ah, Nick! I've had to wait a long time to speak to Professor Stevens, Patsy. He's been murdered. Two murders for an opal, a missing map, and a mysterious talking tree. How can Nick tie these strange events together? We'll see in just a moment. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. And now back to our story. The dying words of a murdered tramp mentioned a talking tree to Nick Cotter. Investigation of the murder and the odd statement led the master detective to the office of Professor Stevens at the university. When Nick and Patsy entered the office, they discovered Stevens murdered. Stevens was shot at close range with a sawed-off shotgun bat, a typical gangster's weapon. Head practically torn to pieces. Oh, it's awful, Nick. Nothing in his pockets to help us either. Nothing. So where does that leave us? About one jump ahead of the homicide squad. They won't be pleased with the way I've handled this case. Sergeant Matheson would call it mishandling. And he won't be far from wrong. I'm not happy myself. Well... Uh-huh. Let's get on the ball, Patsy. Let's do some thinking. Oh, that's your department, Nick. I'm just the audience. Sammy got hold of an opal and a map. We know he showed the opal to Stevens. Mm-hmm. We don't know about the map. Mm. Stevens and Sammy were killed. The map disappeared. Now, what's so valuable about that map? It showed the mine where the opal came from. But Patsy opals don't come from mines. They co- Aha! What is it, Nick? Suddenly, my brain started to work. Suddenly, I'm getting a glimmer. Patsy, I think I know what this talking tree business is. What, Nick? Look here. On Stephen's desk. There's an atlas open to this state. Mm-hmm. Now look across the page where the light hits it. Yeah. You can only see what I want to show you by reflected light. Now, you see anything unusual? Mm, wait a minute. My eyes aren't as sharp as yours. Yes. I, 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 I see a faint pencil mark. As though a pencil point had tapped the map lightly. In a small town. The town of dead trees. Remember that, Betsy. Dead tree. But that isn't talking tree. True enough. And I think that a dead tree, we might find a talking tree. Hmm? And, Betsy, it's going to speak a language that'll astonish you. Oh, don't be so mysterious, Nick. All right, here's another clue. Opals don't grow in mines. They grow on trees. Tree- oh, you're crazy. Oh, you think so, huh? Come on. <laughs> oh, golly, I'm getting inferiority complex. Going through life three laps behind you the way I do. The only trouble in this case is that I happen to be three steps behind a killer. Well, that puts me out of the running all together. Back to three round walk to the corner. Oh, Nick. Just my luck. Haven't got a gun on me. Down the hall. Run. It's the killer. This is a well-wisher. Oh, this hole is a dead end. We're trapped. Here. Oh. Through this door, Patsy. Quick. Oh. Well, oh, that was close. That's too close. Lucky for us, that door wasn't locked. Did, did, did you see who was doing the shooting? No, and the trouble is he saw where we went. What are we going to do? See what we can find to repel the attack. A small lab of some sort. If I can only find... Hurry up, Nick. I can hear steps. Oh, I got it, Patsy. Get out the matches, quick. Matches? You heard me. What are you going to do with matches in that bottle? You're going to light a whole pack of matches and throw it out into the hall. This bottle is ether. I'll break it near the burning matches. All right, light the matches, quick. They're burning, Nick. All right, now throw them out as soon as I open the door. Uh-huh. And I'll throw out the bottle. All right, now. All right, quick, Patsy. Uh-huh.
All right, Patsy, all clear now. You can come out. Is he still here? Yes, knocked out and burned by the explosion. He'll live and regret it. Well, who is it, Nick? One of Dudley Coffin's gunmen. Hophead kid named Byrne. Well, I guess Coffin wasn't kidding about letting something else talk for him. But he forgot that some people talk back. Now, listen, Patsy. In about 20 seconds, this place is going to be like a beehive. I can hear people coming now. If it wasn't Saturday afternoon, the place would be crowded already. Now, we've got to get out of here. Well, then let's go. Not together. We'll hmm? be picked up if they see us running. We'll separate and meet at the car. Okay. Try to stop at a drugstore and pick up some sandwiches. We've got a long drive ahead of us. Where to? Dead Tree? Right. We're going to Dead Tree to find the talking tree. too many already. And I'm supposed to be on a diet. Well, they weren't the best sandwiches I ever had either. I feel as if I were getting Bowman's indigestion. <laughs> oh. How much further is it, Nick? It's getting dark. It should be in Dead Tree any minute. We've passed six signs in the last six miles. Each one said Dead Tree half a mile. Well, at least we're holding our own. They should have added a prox. I think we're a prox there now. <laughs> Looks like a town. What there is of it. Well, give me a second to get used to it. Yes, it's a town, all right. And a three-point landing in front of our objective. The sheriff's office? Right. Come on. Oh, we're not going to get in trouble again, are we? I've got visions of Sergeant Matheson waiting for us back in town. He'll greet us with comparatively open arms if we bring him home a solution. All right, let's go in. Okay. Yes? Is this the sheriff, uh... Jensen. Yes? Well, my name's Nick Carter. Yes? Jeff Denson, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Yeah. I assume that means go ahead and ask. Yeah. Well, do you keep any kind of a check on vagrants passing through Dead Tree? Yeah. Well, do you recall whether a tramp answering to the name of Sammy the Bum passed through here last week? Yeah. How long was he in this section? Don't know. Maybe a couple of days. Golly! He can say something else, can't he? Please, Patsy. Mm -hmm. I can talk, young lady, when there's something worth wasting breath over. Well, why is this town called Dead Tree? On kind of a section of sandy waste up in the hills. You mean desert? Yep. Yeah, kind of like the desert up in Maine. Windswept section, about ten miles square. Nothing but sand and rocks, all eroded. I thought so. Probably petrified trees up there, too, huh? Well, that's what gives the town its name. How'd you know, Nick? Couldn't be any other answer, Bessie. Two more questions, Sheriff. That desert area is constantly enlarging and changing as the wind sweeps it, huh? Yep. Yeah. Will you show us how to drive there, close as possible? Yeah. Sheriff, are you 170 years old? No. Nope. Patsy, for the love of Pete. I'm sorry. I just wanted to hear him say no. And I did. I'm afraid we can't drive any further, Patsy. We'll have to hoof it through the desert. Golly. It looks just like the real thing, doesn't it? Sand and rock? And petrified trees. Come on. Mm-hmm. We'll have to keep pretty quiet now. This sand will deaden our footsteps, fortunately. Because there's a strong chance the killer may be up here ahead of us. Oh. Do you know where to look for him, Nick? I do. We'll find him under the talking tree. Oh, Nick. I'm not fooling. Well, all right, if you say so. But where will we find the talking tree? I'm not sure. We'll have to listen for it. Listen through ten square miles? We won't have to cover that much. See if Simon located it. It couldn't be very far off the road. Probably he turned off the road we drove down to sleep in the warm sand at night. So the tree can't be far from here. Golly, I'm listening for it like mad. I don't hear anything yet. Keep trying. It's awfully dark, Nick. Can we use a light? Safe or not to. Keep your ears open. Okay. Golly, those twisty black tree stumps, they look so spooky. Just petrified trees, Betsy. Dead thousands of years. They can't hurt you. Well, I wish they'd talk to me and get this over. Maybe they will. Keep listening. Nick? Yes? I, I think I hear a funny noise. Like water running. Not here in this desert. No, not water. It sounds like... Like music. Hmm? Listen. Yes. I hear it, Betsy. That's what we've been searching for. The talking tree? That's the way those trees talk. Oh. It's coming from around that small hummock. Oh, come on, let's go interview it. Mm. Careful now. Very 
careful now. I think I hear someone digging or something. The killer. Here? Told you we'd find him under the talking tree. Quiet. And watch. What's he digging up Petrified tree for? Let's go down and ask him. Oh, Nick, be careful. You haven't got a gun. I've got something. I'll take it, please. Good evening. Can I help you? Carter. What? It's the man from the appraisers. Bowman. Don't me, Carter. Don't move. You're caught. I am I. Such rough talk must be difficult for a man of your culture, Mr. Bowman. Or should I call you by your real name, Professor Stevens? Me. All right, Carter, you're asking for this. Oh, look out, Nick. Here you are, Bowman. Oh. 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 Professor is a rank amateur when it comes to handling a gun. Oh, nice going, Nick. How'd you do it? Well, he threw a handful of sand in his eyes. And when he was blinded, hit him. That's all. That's all. Well, that's enough. Now you have his gun and he's out cold. And he's also on his way to the electric chair. Nick, do you mean to tell me Professor Stevens murdered Sammy the Bum? Yes, Patsy. And then pretended he was killed himself. Uh, and he did all that for the sake of a dead tree? Well, take my flashlight, Patsy, and look at that dead tree. <gasps> Golly! It's all crystal and glittery and... Oh, it's like a tree of jewels. Pure opal, Patsy. An opal tree worth a fortune. Too bad we don't hang killers in this state. It would be an excellent place to hang Professor Stevens. We'll return to Nick Carter in just a moment to hear the final details of The Talking Tree. Happy birthday, W.O.R., from Poinitowski Brothers of Flemington, New Jersey. Poinitowski Brothers. And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. Nick. You'd better start at the beginning and explain everything. I'm entirely at sea now. All right, Patsy. The story started millions of years ago when the trees of Dead Tree Valley died. Started petrifying. Uh-huh. After untold centuries, deep under the ground, they turned to stone and then began to crystallize into opal. Oh. Today, as the wind slowly ate away the sand and earth covering them, they were brought to the surface. And when Sammy went out to sleep in the desert, he slept under this opal tree that had been uncovered by the wind? Right. The talking oh. part was the tinkle of the crystalline branches swaying in the wind. Oh. Sammy broke off a piece of the tree and took it into town. Went to Stevens for advice, since he didn't know the value of that opal. Well, then what? Stevens saw the maps Sammy had made and, of course, the jewel. He went with Sammy to have it appraised, just to make sure it was valuable enough to pay him to commit murder. When he found it was, he killed Sammy for the map. But he staged his own murder, too. Why? Sammy talked too much. Stevens didn't know Sammy had told his old pal, Dubsy Coffin. But he did know Sammy told the real Bowman, the appraiser. So to protect the secret, he killed Bowman probably only a few minutes before we entered the store. You remember he stalled before coming out to talk to us? Oh, that's right. I remember he talked about his indigestion. He pretended to be Bowman. Then rushed the body to his own office at the university, perhaps in a laundry basket or a bag. And there, staged his own death. Well, he didn't know it, Nick, but that was just a preview of what's really going to happen to him. It doesn't pay to play act with Nick Carter. Well, that was an unusual tale, Nick. Now, how about a preview of next week's story? What's it going to be? Well, next week, Ken, I'm going to tell you about the case of an 80-year-old man. Feeble, sick, harmless, who suddenly began driving down the highways like a savage, injuring people, wrecking cars, and generally behaving like a maniac. Oh, I remember. It was all because of a beautiful Egyptian queen who died 3,000 years ago. Breaking traffic laws because of a dead queen. Sounds good. What do you call the case? The case of the queen's eyebrows. 